Manifesting your dreams can be a challenging process, but it is not impossible. According to research, your elevated emotions are the carrier of your thoughts, which means that all energy and frequency carries information. The faster the frequency, the higher the energy, and the more elevated the emotion combined with a clearer intention is like a laser. This creates a more coherent signature, which can bring amazing changes to your life. When people have a coherent brain and a coherent heart, something amazing happens in their life. It is not just about feeling gratitude because we know that just having an elevated emotion does not affect matter. It is also not just about having a clear intention of seeing something change because experiments have shown that this doesn't affect matter either. What really makes a difference is when you combine the two, the clear intention with the elevated emotion. Your emotion is the energy, the frequency, and the carrier of your thoughts. Your thought is the intent, the direction, and the specific field frequency. It is like tuning a radio dial, and the vibration and energy that match your desires in the quantum field will find you. Intention is getting clear on what you want. If you want a new home, a beautiful garden, or anything else, start visualizing it. Begin by ripping out magazine pictures of gardens you love, drawing pictures, and writing down the things you want. Hang it up somewhere and keep adding new dreams. Keep your conscious mind on your dreams, and your subconscious mind will take you there. You must remain patient and avoid impatience, because it means you believe that something is not going to happen. Remember, we are here to experience life, to enjoy the magnificence of our creations, and our senses become the artist that writes the story in our biology. Once you start seeing that home or vision, you can start making choices that lead you towards it. You become the creator, and you step into the unknown, doing something that has never been done before. It brings you joy, excitement, and meaning behind it. Your body always follows your mind, so it takes time, just like a garden that you tend to in your life. You'll always be pulling weeds out, pruning branches, fertilizing, and pulling rocks out, but that's the joy of creation because you get to eat the fruit of your own creation. Your intention represents all the details, and they can be summarized in a symbol, a letter, or a picture. If you hold that picture, you hold the symbol, the dream house, or the dream garden. And you know that picture means all of those things because you reviewed all of those things. When you hold the picture, you do not say, when this dream garden comes, then I'll be happy. Instead, you say, the thought I'm having is the experience, and the experience produces the emotion. Once the emotion begins to occur, you put your body in the future instead of in the past. You start opening your heart, which begins to move into coherence, and produces a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. When we talk about energy and frequency, we often associate these concepts with physical properties, such as light, sound, or electricity. However, there's another kind of energy that is equally powerful and yet intangible, which is the energy of our thoughts and emotions. Every thought and feeling we have generates a unique vibration or frequency, which interacts with the universal field of energy around us. This field of energy, also known as the quantum field, is the invisible fabric that connects all things in the universe. It's the same field that allows for instantaneous communication between subatomic particles, regardless of their distance or location. And just like the subatomic particles, our thoughts and emotions can influence and affect this field of energy. The energy that we emit through our thoughts and emotions carries information and intent, which means that it can affect not only ourselves, but also the world around us. If we focus on negative thoughts and emotions, we'll attract more of the same into our lives. On the other hand, if we focus on positive thoughts and emotions, we'll attract positive experiences and opportunities. One of the most powerful emotions that we can cultivate is gratitude. When we're grateful for what we have, we're sending out a positive vibration that attracts more abundance and prosperity into our lives. Gratitude also opens up our hearts, which allows us to connect with others on a deeper level and experience more love and joy. So how can we cultivate a state of gratitude and use it to manifest our desires? The key is to focus on the feeling of gratitude rather than the things that we're grateful for. When we're truly grateful, we feel a sense of expansion and abundance, which is much more powerful than just listing things that we're thankful for. By cultivating this feeling of gratitude, we're also tuning into a specific frequency that is aligned with our desired outcomes. 
This frequency can carry the intent of our thoughts and emotions, which means that we can use it to manifest our goals and dreams. For example, if we want to improve our health or increase our wealth, we can focus on the feeling of gratitude and let that energy carry the intent of our desires. However, it's important to note that not all emotions carry the same frequency or intent. If we're feeling negative emotions such as fear, anger, or frustration, we're emitting a lower frequency that is not aligned with our desires. In fact, these emotions can block us from manifesting what we want as they create resistance and tension in our energy field. Therefore, it's crucial to learn how to self-regulate our emotions and shift our focus back to the feeling of gratitude whenever we feel ourselves slipping into negative patterns. This requires awareness and effort, but it's a skill that can be developed through practice. One way to practice gratitude and self-regulation is through meditation. By meditating on the feeling of gratitude, we can train our minds to focus on the positive aspects of our lives and let go of negative thoughts and emotions. This can help us to stay connected to the energy of our desired outcomes and manifest them more quickly and easily. It's also helpful to surround ourselves with a community of like-minded people who are also focused on positive growth and development. When we're in the presence of others who share our vision and goals, we can amplify our energy and create a supportive and inspiring environment. If we look at the quantum field, thoughts are the electrical charge, while feelings are the magnetic charge. How we think and feel influences every single atom in our lives. When we send out a thought, it sends a signal out into the universe, and the feeling is the magnetic field that draws the event back to us. If we are not in a place of love, whether it's for ourselves or life itself, or if we are reacting with anger, hostility, judgment, or fear, there is no magnetic field for us to draw a loving relationship to us. If we blame someone or a situation for how we feel, we are giving them control over us. It's important to realize that anything that controls how we feel or think makes us a victim. Most people unconsciously respond to their environment, and their emotions are often derived from stress hormones. These emotions cause us to feel separate from our dreams and heighten our senses, making it difficult to see beyond the present threat or danger. We may think positively about the relationship we want, but if we are not drawing the experience back to us, it's because our response to the environment is weakening us, and it's weakening our bodies. This makes us more vulnerable to the conditions around us, including microorganisms. If we want a relationship based on love, we need to practice trading our survival emotions for elevated ones and opening our hearts. This is a skill that requires us to move out of survival mode. Some people may say they can't open their hearts or feel love. However, we need to ask ourselves what we practice feeling because whatever we practice feeling, we feel most of the time. It could be guilt, but we may not even recognize it because we are so used to it. The stronger the emotions we feel from the problems and conditions in our lives, the more we focus on what's causing them outside of us. When we experience an event that has a strong emotional charge, we may not feel like ourselves, and our alarm system may switch on. It's crucial to recognize that we can control our emotions and reactions by practicing elevating them. Meditation is a powerful tool to cultivate love within ourselves and for others. It's important to remember that love is not just a feeling, it's a choice. We can choose to love ourselves, others, and life itself. When we choose love, we attract more love into our lives. Here are some tips on how to use meditation to cultivate love. Set aside some time every day to meditate. Start with a few minutes and gradually increase the time as you feel comfortable. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. One of the most amazing abilities we have as human beings is the power of metacognition. This term refers to our capacity to think about our own thinking and to observe and modify our behavior and emotions. This self-awareness and self-regulation give us the ability to make changes in our lives and achieve personal growth. When we become aware of our own thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, we can begin to see patterns that may not be serving us well. For example, we may notice that we are frequently feeling angry or sad, and we may realize that these emotions are holding us back from living the life we truly desire. With metacognition, we can choose to modify our thoughts and emotions to create a better outcome. It's like the scene in The Lord of the Rings where Gandalf stands on the bridge and says, You shall not pass. 
This kind of decision is an experience that can be life-changing. When we decide to change, we can transmute negative emotions into more positive ones. This is a powerful shift that can lead to greater self-love and joy. Emotions are addictive and they leave a record of the past in our bodies. When we experience the same negative emotion repeatedly, our bodies become conditioned to believe that we are living in the same past conditions. However, we can change this by intentionally creating new, positive emotions through our thoughts alone. This is an important realization because it means that we have the power to change our emotional states and free ourselves from emotional addictions. When we experience self-love and joy, we become liberated from our emotional addictions. We begin to look back on our past experiences as necessary steps that brought us to where we are now. This kind of freedom allows us to live fully in the present moment and experience life more deeply. Unfortunately, some people may not see the possibility for change until they reach a crisis point. However, when we are able to make positive changes in our own lives, we become a living example of the power of personal growth. When we are filled with joy and passion for life, we inspire others to make changes in their own lives as well. Of course, change can be difficult, and it's not always easy to let go of old habits and negative emotions. But when we stop talking about making changes and actually begin to take action, we know that we are in the midst of true personal growth. As we become more aware of our own thoughts and behaviors, we can create a more fulfilling life for ourselves and inspire others to do the same. In life, we often encounter people who are stuck in their ways and find it challenging to change. However, if we want to inspire change in others, we must first demonstrate it ourselves. Rather than preaching philosophically, we must showcase a new way of living through our actions and lifestyle. When we wake up each morning and strive to make positive changes in our life, those around us will have one of two choices. They will either become inspired by our changes and seek to make similar ones themselves, or they will be unable to maintain a relationship with us due to the stark contrast between our newfound freedom and their current habits and emotional states. If they choose the latter, they may remain the same for the rest of their lives unless a crisis occurs, forcing them to make a change. Therefore, it is vital for those around us to see us living in a state of joy and freedom, demonstrating it in every aspect of our lives. This is because sooner or later others will start to vibrate at the same frequency as us, thanks to the phenomenon known as entrainment in physics. By being an example, we can influence others to rise up and live better lives without having to lecture or preach to them. If someone in our life is stuck in a pattern of suffering or guilt, it is because they are addicted to that feeling, and they use people and circumstances in their lives to reaffirm that addiction. If we refuse to participate in their addiction by demonstrating joy and freedom, they will have to make a choice. They can either surrender their addiction or remain stuck in their pattern. Therefore, the best thing we can do for them is to stop meeting them on that level and begin to influence them to rise up through our actions, not our words. In life, we always have two choices, to notice others or to ignore them. There is nothing wrong with feeling frustrated or sad. Emotions are not bad. However, our reactions to people or situations in our lives create a refractory period of chemicals, which alters our chemistry. This is because 70% of the time, we live in a state of stress or survival, always on the lookout for danger or threat. This is such a common program that we don't even realize we are doing it. When something appears out of the ordinary, our bodies alert us and we move into a state of arousal turning on systems that warn us of possible danger or threats. When this happens, we begin to anticipate outcomes and prepare for the worst case scenario, creating emotions ahead of the experience. This can manifest as fear, anxiety, worry, sadness, or pain. Therefore, it is important to be mindful of our reactions to people and situations in our lives. Instead of reacting from a place of fear or stress, we should strive to respond calmly and thoughtfully. By doing so, we can create a more positive and peaceful environment around us, inspiring others to do the same. As human beings, we are creatures of habit. We tend to repeat certain patterns of behavior without even realizing it. These patterns can be positive or negative, and they shape the way we view the world around us. In fact, we often become so accustomed to these patterns that they become our default mode of thinking and acting. This is what we call a program. 
Now, when it comes to men, there is a certain societal expectation that they have to provide for their families, be successful, and be competitive. This can create a lot of pressure and stress, and often leads men to close themselves off emotionally. They feel that they cannot afford to be vulnerable because they need to focus on survival and success. However, in our work, we have seen that when men practice opening their hearts, they experience tremendous benefits. They start to reconnect with their inner child, becoming curious and playful once again. They begin to experience a sense of freedom and wonder, allowing themselves to let go of their inhibitions. And as a result, they start to trust more and open up more. This creates a positive cycle where they become happier and more fulfilled. Of course, opening one's heart is not an easy task. It often requires men to lay down the very thing they have used their whole lives to achieve success. It can be a daunting prospect, but the benefits are tremendous. We have seen men who were suffering from serious heart conditions, unable to take more than a few steps without experiencing chest pain, heal instantaneously. We have also seen men with stage 4 cancer experience a profound shift in their energy and start to release the chemicals necessary for restoring and repairing their bodies. So what exactly happens when men open their hearts? First and foremost, they begin to lead from a different consciousness. They are no longer motivated solely by the desire for success and achievement, but by a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment. They also become more compassionate and empathetic, which are essential qualities for effective leadership. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of evidence or support in our environment for men to be vulnerable. Society often views vulnerability as a weakness rather than a strength. However, recent research has shown that vulnerability is actually one of the top five qualities for a great leader. When men begin to understand this, they start to slowly break down the walls they have built around themselves. Just like a flower blooming, petal by petal, they start to trust a little bit more, opening up more and becoming happier in the process. It is important to note that the joy that men seek does not come from external factors such as success, wealth, or popularity. It comes from within. When men practice opening their hearts, they start to realize this truth. They begin to break down the facade they have created to fit into society's expectations and start living their lives authentically. In our work, we give men numerous opportunities to practice and connect with one another. We have found that the heart opens not only when you care for yourself, but also when you care for others. When men give and experience gratitude, they start to become more connected and fulfilled. During our healing sessions, we have found that men often have to be in their hearts to truly connect with others. This may seem indirect and sneaky, but it is an essential part of the healing process. When men allow themselves to be vulnerable and open, they create a space for healing to occur. This healing can be physical, emotional, or spiritual in nature. 